So, I'm Nicholas Francis. I am one of the founders of FrameBunker, a small indie game studio. Before that, I was one of the founders of Unity. So I'm giving a talk on advanced shader programming. It's basically that, that we found that on tablets today, you can actually pull off some quite amazing stuff, as long as you're willing to sort of re-architect some bits of Unity. So I'm giving some talks about some of the tricks we're using and like other ways of making sure that your game on a tablet actually looks as good as it can. It's funny because I'm one of the people who have actually worked both on Unity and, and working with Unity. And it occurred to me the other day that working with Unity, the, the users actually have the far better deal of these two groups. Because when you're developing it, you, sort of, you see all the errors, you always know what's missing, you're always focusing on sort of the things that are broken and need to improve. And suddenly when I sat down and used it, I just, started, I just locked myself into, a, into like a small cabin for a week. And just, okay, I'm going to play around with this, so I'll try to make something. And I was amazed at, at just what an awesome tool we'd built. Mentally, I have known for many years we built a really good tool. But to actually sit down and use it was absolutely fascinating. And it was like I could beat it about and smash it and sort of twist and bend it. And it didn't break, which is kind of fun because I'm... Because having worked on developing, I'd always, I always knew where all the breakage was. So I'm absolutely loving being a Unity user and having so much fun with it and finding this like incredible productivity. And it's funny because that's like the drug I've been peddling. But now I suddenly found out, oh God, this is such an awesome drug. <laughs> so developing with Unity is this really sort of smooth feeling. It's, and it's very interesting because you can sort of mix a match between saying, okay, this is where we'll use all like the out of the box components. And you have like this incredibly smooth workflow there. And then this, you say, this, is, this other area is going to be this key focus area for our development. So I will sort of sidestep Unity in this part and just like re-architect my own system so that I just ignore what Unity is providing. And then you sort of get the customization you need to make your game stand out in that area. And then you have sort of this sort of in between, we have the asset store. We have somebody else, they also have some place where they're like, we need for our game for Unity to be able to do this. So we're going to do it and do it right. And then you get them that. So you have these sort of three paths. And for each technical problem, you need to pick. Like, do you want to go like the easy proven route? Do you want to sort of find something on the asset store? Or is this something where we think this is important enough to our game that it's worth spending a couple of days actually implementing ourselves? And no full well, you won't have such a smooth workflow with, as you would with the building tools. As like a technologist, I can sort of pick and choose my battles. It's like I don't need to spend a lot of time dealing with stuff that is not important. I can sort of spend my time on the stuff I find interesting, where I can deliver the most value, and where I can sort of really have fun. I'm a graphics programmer originally, and that's sort of that's where I put a lot of my focus. So, so like we're not using a lot of the Unity's graphics functionality which, because we're just rolling our own there. But for a lot of the other stuff, we're just taking what's straight out of the box and just using that because it works just fine. You can skip a lot of the pain and then just sort of focus on get, and you sort of immediately dive into the meat of what you want to do. I think that's a very, it's a very fascinating way of working. I think if you want to get started out as a games developer, there's like, I think there's a few pieces of advice. And one of them is don't try to make a game because I see a lot of people wanting to start out as game development and they have five great ideas, try to shove them into one game. And odds are your first game is going to suck. I mean, that's just the nature of, of doing any craft. If you're a carpenter, you should not start trying to build a huge house. Start with like building a small wooden thingy. Plan for multiple games and, and then sort of say, okay, this game, I want to explore this dynamic. And then sort of dive into that and take that all the way and then ignore some, some of the other sort of distractions. Then I think the next thing is that there's nothing that will sell like a fun game. It's like, you can have great graphics, you can have great story, you can have great sound. If the game isn't actually fun, then it's not gonna sell. There's a story from one of the Rovio founders. Before they did Angry Birds, they had done, I mean, they've been making games for I think 18 years and they all bombed. But then they just had the small prototype and they showed it to their mum, and then they couldn't get the device back from their mum, and that's when they knew this is gonna be our hit. So it's like, you actually have to have the game be fun. If the game is not fun, it's not going to succeed. And so the last thing is something just from like building companies and teams. It's like, I always found that it's, 
there's two areas where you really need to focus. The first one is you need to focus on what you do best, because that's what drives you forward. So if you're good at doing some particular thing, that is probably the thing that is going to make sure your game is a success. The other thing you need to focus on is the thing you do worst, because that's the thing that's crippling you. You're always trying to improve what you're best at and fix what you're very worst at. And after a while, there'll be something else you're very worst, and then you'll sort of figure that out. So basically, you focus on what's driving you forward, and you focus on not getting too crippled by your greatest weakness, and then the rest will sort of take care of itself.